Colin Kaepernick tweeted a video that he's still working. And Shefty has a report from an anonymous source that says Colin Kaepernick's in the best shape of his career. That's just a weird thing to attribute to an anonymous source. Aren't we all in the best shape of our career at any given time? I mean, that is such a subjective, self-serving comment. It's just odd. The bottom line is, yes, he's still working out. Yeah, he's moving well there. And you know what? There aren't a lot of quarterbacks in this cycle. Someone emailed me earlier today, not not anybody in the league, just a, a, a viewer, while we were talking about all the teams, and we broke it down, the teams that definitely need quarterbacks, the teams that may need quarterbacks, the teams that have guys that they may want to upgrade. There are not enough quarterbacks right now to go around. Right. Starting caliber quarterbacks. And look... If Jim Harbaugh had taken the job in Minnesota, if he'd been offered the job, it's not like he turned it down. If he'd been given the chance to take the job in Minnesota and he had taken it, he's the one guy who's been on record over the years praising Colin Kaepernick. He drafted him 11 years ago. I just think that the ship has sailed. And the ship has sailed for one very simple reason. The league successfully colluded against Colin Kaepernick long enough that you look at it and you say five years, it's too long. You can't play. And I've told Sims this in the past. At some point, you successfully keep him out for so long that the mere passage of time that you've kept him out becomes the primary argument to not give him an argument, uh, to not give him an opportunity, excuse me. Even though it was wrong to get to this point, it was wrong to freeze him out 2017, 2018, 2019, 2020, 2021. It was wrong, it was wrong, it was wrong, it was wrong, it was wrong. But who's going to give him a chance now? And I, I look, he should have had at least a workout with a team at some point in the last five years. But regardless of what he tweets, regardless of what Shefty reports, best shape of his life doesn't matter. Doesn't matter. It's it never happened in those five years, and it's not happening now. Seattle's the only team that brought him in for a visit in 2017. And I think they were concerned that if they had him on the team, it would undermine Russell Wilson, and there would have been some guys in the locker room that would have rallied around Colin Kaepernick. They didn't want that. Well, now they got an opening, but I still – I'll be stunned. I'll be stunned. I think that ship has fully and finally sailed, and no amount of workout videos and no amount of reports and no amount of anything is going to change it at this point. Completely agree with you, Mike. I don't think he it plays in the NFL ever again. But you know what team actually makes sense is the Pittsburgh Steelers. They have a black head coach. They just hired Brian Flores, who we know is suing the league. So they're, they're not scared of that, obviously. And guess what? They need a quarterback. Why wouldn't you, if you're the Steelers, offer this guy a minimum salary deal? Make it known. If he wants to turn down a minimum salary deal and have a chance to come back, that's fine. But give him that opportunity because you're not scared to, to do that uh, because you weren't scared to bring in Brian Flores. Yeah. Um, and, and, and look, the NFL knows it has a problem. The NFL claims it wants to solve the problem. Now, it's focused on the problem as it relates to the hiring of black coaches and general managers. This is a different racial issue altogether, and it's really not – it's more about the power that they have over the players. And it's about being upset with players who make the other robots self-aware. That's why they were upset with Kaepernick. He put them in a bad spot by, by noticing and taking full advantage of the flaw in the NFL rule book that allows players to not stand during the national anthem. And he became the face of that movement that caused so much heartache and financial pain for the NFL in 2016 and 2017 that 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 that, that they're what look they settled with him they don't settle with anybody they they fight and yeah. they fight and they fight and they fight they settled for somewhere between five and ten million dollars with Colin Kaepernick on his collusion claim and technically I, I was telling somebody about this recently he he had a second collusion case that he could have made that he never did make arising from the ongoing refusal to give him a chance after he settled his first case. And as I've said in the Brian Flores context, the second lawsuit can be stronger than the first one. The second lawsuit is you're colluding against me now, not because I didn't stand for the anthem. You're colluding against me now 
because I went after you and you had to pay me and you're pissed at me. Because I thought when they settled with him, they were going to buy out his future employment rights. I was stunned when I saw that he was still in play to play for an NFL team. And there was optimism by his lawyer, Mark Garrigus, at the time that he'd get an opportunity. And I, I just kind of knew then it's not going to happen. And they had that, that very clumsy, clunky workout arranged by the league in 2019. Remember that in November? Yeah. And there was language yeah. in a release that, that was so broad that there was concern. And there was fault on both sides on how they handled it. And I think there was, there was fair criticism that both the league and Kaepernick really didn't want to do this, but neither wanted to be blamed as the one who derailed it. It was just weird. It was odd. And it's, it's just, it's, it's over. Even though I believe that he was wronged and it's going to trigger all those people out there who want to lock onto the false narratives that too many people in our business peddled on behalf of people in the league who were trying to avoid having to sign Colin Kaepernick and some of our colleagues in the media engaged in some shameful activity in giving credence to those bullcrap arguments. Regardless where we are right now, it's just too, five years is too long. It's just not going to happen. Yeah, it's not going to happen. I would love to see it just to see what he had. You know what? If you sign him to a veteran minimum deal and you see in the preseason he doesn't still have it, then you can say, okay, you know, we tried. He didn't have it. Let's move on. He's had his opportunity. So to me, it's just a no risk decision. Now, I know some fans would be upset with this, but you know what? If he plays great, they, they don't get upset anymore. The fans of that team. Uh, we'll love Colin Kaepernick. But there's just, as you said, Mike, there's just not a qu- enough quarterbacks to go around. And if you think you're going to fill that need in the draft, pff, think again. This just doesn't look like a great quarterback draft. I know probably one of these guys will hit or maybe two of them will hit. But this just doesn't look like the blue chip, no doubt quarterback in this draft that you're going to hit on. So if you need a quarterback, you're really running out of options at this point. Yeah, I agree with you, but at the same time, well, let me ask you this. Do you think if someone offered Colin Kaepernick a one-year veteran minimum deal right now, he would take it, or would he want more than that? I don't know. I think he probably, based on what we heard and if it was true out of the XFL and everything else, he would want more than that. But I would make it known. I'm offering this. I'm giving you an opportunity. Take it or leave it. Well... And, and, you know, I, I've said all along that if the NFL wanted to prove it wasn't colluding against Colin Kaepernick, somebody should have offered him a one-year minimum deal and forced him to say yeah. no. Force him to say no. Right. Don't, don't just not make him an offer. See, I think they were afraid he'd say yes. It becomes, it becomes an awkward dance at that point. We saw it play out in the context of the workout in 2019. Do we really want to do this? Who's going to be the one to admit that we're really just kind of playing a game here? Because I really do think it's devolved into gamesmanship on both sides. So if someone offers him a veteran minimum deal and he takes it just to call their bluff and then it progresses to the next level and it's, it's, it's not good for anybody at that point. And I, I, I just... I think nothing good for anyone comes out of it at this point. And it's, I'm, I'm reluctant to say it because I believe that he was wrong. But at this point, there's yeah. no reason for him to want back in. There's no reason for a team to want him back in because it's just not happening. It would be a great experiment if it would occur, but I, I just, I'm realistic. Ultimately, I'm realistic. I was idealistic in 2017, 2018, and into 2019. I've been realistic the past couple of years. It's just not, it's not going to happen. And they, they, he, he did remember when he did sit for the national anthem and then kneel for the national anthem, there was an acknowledgement. He was putting his career on the line and he did, he did. He, he finished the year with the 49ers and that was it. Became a free agent, opted out of his contract, which, which gave the anti Kaepernick crowd a a twisted argument. Well, he opted out. Well, they were going to cut him anyway. John Lynch told us that in 2017, he told us that. On PFT Live, we would have cut him if he hadn't opted out. But, you know, when it's a political issue, it's no longer about reality, Shereen. It's about whatever spin on the facts fits your view of the world. And Colin Kaepernick became the the heart of that. And uh, it's uh, plain and simple. So it's unfortunate it happened. He was wronged. But 
this is not the right outcome to have him come back, to expect him to have a chance back in the NFL. And I, I really think for the team involved, for any team involved, again, at, and, and it's not collusion for the teams individually to decide at this point. It's just not worth it. And, it, and I hate to say that. I hate to say, I hate to cry uncle on this. But at this point, after five years, it's just not worth it. Well, I don't know at what point, Mike, I said no one's ever going to give him a chance, but there was some point in there, maybe after free agency in 2017 when he didn't get signed, maybe that was it. But I always believed up until that point that if you were talented, if you were a quarterback who had started in a Super Bowl, that you were going to get a second opportunity. There would be nothing to keep you from getting a second opportunity. It's just like now when I when I look at Henry Ruggs and I look at some other players in the NFL, when I look at Calvin Ridley, I'm not certain their careers are over. Maybe they come back because you think, well, they've got talent. Somebody's going to give them a second opportunity. So it's just amazing to me that this guy never got that second opportunity to finish really what he had started in starting a Super Bowl because I do think he could have led a team to a Super Bowl again. Well, and look at all the guys who have gotten second chances over the years for absolutely things that they did that were clearly unsavory and or illegal. Mike Vick went to prison for two years for crying out loud. Antonio Brown has had one erratic episode after another. Talent always wins, except when you stick your finger yeah. in the eye of ownership, you cost them money, you create heartache and headache that's when you cross a line that can't be uncrossed. And, and, and I hope history views it that way. The problem is so many of those bullcrap narratives, and I really have to restrain myself. I want to call them what they are, narratives. They took root with the public because, as I said a few minutes ago, we in the media, not us, Shireen, but some of our colleagues in yeah. the media legitimized those bullcrap arguments like, uh, you know, he just the stupid and I've written about this before, the stupid stream of lame ass excuses. He he really doesn't want to play. He's more concerned about activism. He wants to be paid too much money. He opted out. He turned down a chance to play for the Broncos. No, that was in 2016 before he ever kneeled for the anthem. The Broncos were never going to give him another chance. And remember John Elway with that bullcrap argument that he made in 2017. Well, we wanted him last year. But he didn't want to come here, yeah. so he doesn't get a second chance. Meanwhile, they brought back Brock Osweiler after he left free, in free agency. <laughs> the, it, once yeah. he did what he did, that was it. He crossed a line yeah. that could not be uncrossed. And the NFL has no problem ultimately paying him 5 to $10 million for collusion, taking PR hit after PR hit for looking ridiculous for what it did. And it's, it's just it, it's unfortunate. It's sad, but it's over. That's my point. Regardless of whatever happened and why it happened and that it shouldn't have happened, I, I just don't see the point in it happening now. Yeah, it is over, Mike. The, the end is here, and, you know, he's still putting up these videos, which I'm sure the NFL hates because here we go with this argument again. But it is over for Colin Kaepernick, and maybe he just wants to take a dig at the NFL, maybe continually. Maybe he's going to keep these videos coming for the next five years to say, hey, I could still play in the NFL just to take a dig at him. Because I'm sure, Mike, he knows it's over. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.